Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. You're listening to Juniper 5, 2385. My name is Milton Metz, and our guest tonight is Cassius Clay, the fourth-ranked world heavyweight. Our question, what's it like to be a world-famous boxer? Now back to our calls. Hello. My name is James Wright. All right. I li- um, what would you like to ask, Mr. Clay? If you ever lose your rain, if you ever lose your temper in the rain, like Emmett Griffin. What was your question? Like, like, like. Um, do, do I, Griffin, do I, do I ever lose my temper? If you, if I ever, what would happen? If you, if you ever lose your temper in the ring, like. Emmett Griffin, what would, what would you feel among yourselves? Well, how can we say that Emmett Griffin uh, lost his temper? Did you know what he was thinking? I mean, Emmett Griffin has always been an aggressive fighter, and that's his style, and uh, he happened to tag Benny Kidd Perrette with a solid punch and shook him up. Uh, I don't know nothing about how angry was he, or I could be. I could have been angry in my last fight. You didn't know. Okay, thank you, young man. Okay. Good night. Hello? Uh, how how long do you run in the, the days, in the mornings? Oh, uh, sometimes I run as um, uh, much as ten miles when I feel like it. But on the average, training for fight, uh, I run three miles every morning. All right, thanks. You're welcome. This is Juniper Five Two Three Eight Five. What's it like to be a world famous boxer? Tonight, meet Louisville's Cassius Clay, our guest here. We'll be here for more than an hour until 10 o'clock tonight. Hello. Mr. Matt? Yes. My name is Larry King. Yes, Larry. Uh, I would like to ask Cassius a question. All right, he's listening to you. Do you think that you are as good a boxer as Joe Lewis was at your age? Well, I don't only think, but I know that I'm not as good, but better. I'm more, I'm faster than Joe Lewis, I'm taller and heavier than he was at my age, I'm more classier, I'm faster, and I'm more colorful, and I talk more. Thank you. Anything else? Do you think that you are as great now as Joe Lewis was? No, I don't. Uh, As a matter of fact, I know I'm not as great as Joe Lewis was at this stage of my career. Thank you. All right. Hello? Hey, Cash, my name is Danny Hutt, and I'd like to know um, if you had very much trouble taking the Olympics. Well, I had a lot of trouble taking the Olympics. Fighting is never easy. At first, I had to win the National Golden Glove Championship. Then I had to beat the United States Army Champion. I had to beat the United States uh, National College Champion. I had to beat the United States Air Force Champion. That wasn't all. That may be the United States uh, Light Heavyweight Champion. Then I had to go to Rome, Italy, and I had, to, um, I had, I had four rough fights with a Belgium, a Australian, a Poland, Polish boy and a Russian and and there were 64 boys in my division and we eliminated each other so that made me the world's champion and it was not an easy time. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello. This is Jimmy Silk and uh, uh, I guess uh, uh, Cassius Clay, uh, uh, how long do you think you'll go with Sonny List? Uh, well, I told you, Sonny List, you, if you've been reading the paper or if you've been listening to the program, I said, Sonny Liston, that fight I predict would go eight rounds with me standing over Sonny Liston. And if he keeps popping off like he's doing, I'm going to have to cut that prediction to four. As you recall, when I fought Archie Moore, I said, Archie Moore, you must fall in eight. I was talking to him just like I'm talking to you. I said, Archie, you must fall in eight. He kept popping off about a punch called the lip buttoner, so I had to cut it from eight to four. Thanks. So Sonny Liston will go eight rounds with me. Yeah, are you, oh, well, that's all. All right, thank you. This is WHAS in Louisville, Kentucky, 840 on your dial. Clear Channel Radio, 50,000 watts. Hello? This is John Wall. Yes, Mr. Wall. I wanted to ask Cassius that uh, he says he's great, and a lot of people say he's great, but every great man has to have some faults, and I wondered if he knew what his faults were. Yes, I have faults. One of my faults is eating too much. As a matter of fact, uh, me and Matt here well, just got through eating and I ate two pieces of pie, five dips of ice cream, uh, two orders of veal, two orders of uh, uh, dressing, three slices of bread, a green salad, and a bowl of chili. And what I want to tell you is that not only did he eat all that, but as a result, I'm not going to be buying my own dinner for the next week because it's all gone for Cassius's <laughs> dinner tonight. That's one of my faults, to answer your question. And uh, I really don't have too many faults. I like to stay up late hours, watch television, which is wrong when you're really training. 
But uh, I don't really, have, I don't think I have too many faults unless somebody can reveal them for me. Are you talking about a boxing fault, sir? Yeah, boxing fault, sir. Well, in boxing faults, they, are, they say I have a habit. I drop my hands low to uh, trick my opponent. But Archer told the experts to pay no attention to the to the faults that I show in the ring because I can hit a man. A man can punch at me when my hands are down. I can raise my hands up in time to block him and hit him five times before he moves his head. So don't pay no attention to what may look like faults. But I, if I do have faults, they haven't been revealed yet because I'm still calling the rounds and doing it. And the day I'm on the floor, then I will, uh, uh, then I'll know I have faults. Thank you, Cassius. Good You're welcome. Time. Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes, Cassius speaking. This is Stephen Ball. I'd like to know, Cassius, what food you eat while you're on the road, while you're training. Well, uh, when I'm training, I eat uh, I love scrambled eggs, and uh, I eat whole wheat toast with them, and grits. What meats do you eat, guys? Uh, I eat hamburger patties with, I love hamburger patties with my breakfast, and for lunch I eat uh, green salads and light soups, and for dinner I love, uh, I usually eat uh, one or two T-bone steaks with um, baked potato and orange juice and whole wheat toast because it's not fattening and lamb and chicken and anything I can get my hands on that's uh, not detrimental to a fighter. How do you get these foods while you're traveling from one place to another? Oh, uh, when I'm traveling from one fight to another, I usually travel, um, uh, I hate, as much as I hate to fly, I usually fly sometimes, and but most of the time I ride the train. And food is awful high, but I can get anything I want on the train. There are no problems with as far as financial uh, uh, things are concerned because with my contract, managers pay all expense. So before I leave town, I make sure that I have enough pocket money to eat what I want. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. It was a good question. Hello. Hello, uh, Mr. Mitt. Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to wish Cassius the best of everything. Thank you very much. I, I feel like you go to the top, and I've been in your corner ever since you started. I saw you when you made your first start out here to Freedom Hall. Thank Pro. you. And I believe you go to the top with that kind of confidence. I don't see how you can miss. Thank you. You're awful smart. Question I'd like to ask, I noticed uh, when you fought Archie Moore. Yes. You didn't go to the body. Was there any special reason for that? No, because Archie Moore is an awful great fighter at the age of uh, 50 some odd years old. He was awful tricky. He made me miss more punches uh, than I have ever missed. Uh, and strange to say, I was awful tired from punching and moving and staying out of the way. Archie was awful sharp. He was in condition. He was awful fast. His legs weren't too strong, but he had the punch and the zip. And any other fighter in the ranking, I believe that Archie would have got two. But uh, uh, I didn't go to the body because Arch is tricky and he's hard to hit. And um, uh, I, that, that is right, I didn't go to the body. But I, I, I believe that if you, uh, if you can uh, bang a man enough on his head or if you can box him enough, then uh, th that will control his mind. Your, your, your mind control all parts of your body. And if you can uh, work the right combinations on the upper part of the body, well, you don't have to worry about the lower part. But a tall fella, I would punch at his body, but Arch was too short. Yeah, he did have a good defense there, didn't he? He had a great defense, but uh, I was just a little bit. I broke through it. Uh, uh, in other words, kill the head and the body will die. Right. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Hello. Uh, hello. I would like to ask Cassius if, if anyone had ever asked him to be in a fixed fight. Have anyone have ever accused me of having a fixed fight? Has anyone ever asked you if you would take part in a fixed fight? I don't know if that's a fair question, but if you want to no, answer it, go No, ahead. I don't know. You see these crooked boxing pictures at the theaters and on television, but I haven't ran into none of, none of that stuff. All right, thank you. Hello? I'm Galen Hiss. Yes, Mr. Hiss. I want to ask Cassius how long you think he'll last with Cleveland Williams. Cleveland Williams, his manager uh, t t in today's paper, uh, he's a little angry about me being ranked over Cleveland Williams. Cleveland Williams, his manager, as I started to say, has offered me 
$10,000 for every round that I go with Cleveland Williams. So he, he, he really have more confidence than I do saying something like that. But this, if I did fight Cleveland Williams, that would be the first fight that I would make no prediction in. I would want that fight to go as long as it could. But as far as predicting r rounds are concerned, uh, uh, if I could knock this fella out and still get the full guarantee, I say Cleveland Williams must fall in three rounds. Well, do you think you'll win? He will fall in three. He will fall in three? So automatically, I would have to be the one-off. Well, all right, thank you. And then if I fall, I leave the country. Don't you have any doubt? No doubt at all. Well, good luck. And don't you have no doubt in whatever you're doing. Well, I always fight, and I usually win. I thank you. Well, you all right. And I follow you all over the nation. Thank you. Okay. Okay, we'll see you. Bye. Good night. Hello. Uh, my name is Evergreen Endicott. I called in last night, too. Yes, Mr. Endicott. I, I had a call, Cassius, because he's my favorite fighter, actually. Thank and, you. Uh, Cassius, I'd like to ask you, uh, after you do uh, beat Sonny Liston, which, of course, you will. Thank you. Uh, I wonder who, who you think has a possible chance of coming close to beating you for the title. Well, who would have a possible chance of uh, me defending my title against? Uh, well, uh, Ingemar Johansson is a real good a fighter, and also uh, Eddie Machen, Cleveland Williams, and this fellow uh, by the name of Billy Daniels, and um, a lot of more boys uh, such as I that are really unknown, but uh, I'll just cross that bridge when I get to it. Uh, if tax wasn't so hard on us fighters, I would fight every month. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Endicott. Hello. Mr. Rath, I'd like to ask Cassius a two-part question here. Number one is, uh, how soon before an actual fight do you eliminate body contact in uh, with sparring mates and so forth? And the second part of the question is, uh, what does your training habits consist of the day of a fight as far as food is concerned? The day of the fight? Yes, uh-huh. Well, as far as body contact with my sparring partners, we quit sparring three days before the fight. And, um... Uh, day, the, day of, the day of the fight, we weigh in at around 10 o'clock for the weigh-in. I usually uh, I usually eat about three or four porch eggs, uh, dry toast, orange juice, and then uh, weigh in and come back rest. And if the fight goes on usually about 10, uh, I'm always the main event, so I'll go on about 10. They start about 8.30. Uh, I would, uh, at about 4 o'clock, I would eat a big steak dinner, and then uh, 10 o'clock I'll be hungry. And that makes me fight hard because I'm mad. I can't wait to get back to eat. Is there anything that you do uh, right before a fight as far as uh, loosen up or anything that you do until you actually get into the Well, yes, in my room, I'd, after dinner, I walk, I take a walk, uh, walk around the block. I used to, but I really can't do it now. The fans, you know, run me to death, but I used, used to take a walk around the block and then uh, come back to my room and shadow box one round, work up a little sweat, take a shower, rest, and get up about uh, 8 o'clock and get ready to go to the fight. Then when I get to the fight, I warm up about 10 minutes before the fight goes on. Uh -huh. Are you uh, as relaxed now going into a fight as you were before you were... No, uh, I'm not. No, or... I, I'm not relaxed when I'm going to fight now, and I'm not relaxed when I walk the street because, uh, as you know, I'm known as the Louisville Lip all over the world. Uh, when I enter the fight, I have already called and predicted the round, so I'm extra tense. I'm never relaxed when I enter the ring. I'm never relaxed until my opponent fall in the round that I called. Can you, uh, can you sleep normally after a fight? Well, after my fight, we have vic I always have a victory party after all my fights, so I really can't uh, sleep. We we stay up until about uh, maybe three or four uh, that night at my victory parties, and then when I g go to bed, I'm really tired. I can sleep. And then one last question: uh, Do you have any preferences to outdoor or indoor fights? Outdoor indoor fights with Floyd Patterson when he fought a uh, Sonny Liston was cool that night. I didn't like that. And when Dick Tiger fought Gene Fulman, it was cool that night. But on a nice warm summer night, I would love to fight outside better because people smoke at fights, and that smoke gathers up in the auditorium and can choke you a little. But uh, I'd rather fight outside if I could, if the weather's all right. Sir, thank you for some very good questions. Thank you. Right, good, good night. On. Let's take a moment out here for a word, and then we'll be back with more calls with Cassius Clay. This is our program featuring Mr. Clay. What's it like to be a world-famous boxer? Our number is Juniper 52385. Now back to our calls.
Hello, Mets here with Cassius Clay. Hello, this is Pete Maggie. Cassius, I'd like to know if uh, Sonny Liston knocks you out, will you retire? Well, I don't know. Uh, I never gave that a thought. It's a funny thing. Uh, some people say I should, either, should at least consider these things. Uh, some people say that I should at least think about it, but I've never gave that a thought of Sonny Liston or anybody knocking me out. But as I have said and I say again, if Sonny Liston decisions me or if Sonny Liston knock me out, then I'm leaving the country. All right, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Hello. Hello, Cassius. Yes. Um... All right. Go right ahead now if you want to talk. Hello, Cassius. Why yeah. do you, I like to ask you, why do you have so much comfort? Well, after, uh, after 10 years of uh, boxing, 2 years professional, 8 years amateur, I have won the United States Golden Glove Championship 59 and 60, the United States AAU Champion 59 and 60, and in the late part of 60, I went to Rome, Italy and won the World's Amateur Championship. I won the gold medal uh, for the United States, and I believe that, I, as I say, I believe that I'm the next champion and the most colorful, the best boxing, the fastest heavyweight in the world today. I have that confidence, and I've had 16 professional fights, knocked out 13, won them all, and, um, um, uh, 10 of the, 11 of the fights I called exactly around, plus I'm the first, uh, I'm one of the only uh, fighters in the world who, for an example, who talk on these type programs. I have, a, I've had two big write-ups in Life magazine, uh, Sport Illustrated magazine, these magazines fighters usually don't make, and a lot of more countless things that I can name. So uh, this this gives me confidence and this make me uh, 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 talk like I do. All right, thank you very much. Good night. Hello. Hello, uh, Milton. Yes. I want to ask Cassie some questions. Yes. That, uh, for instance, Cassie, I know that you think a great deal of Joe Martin, mm -hmm. uh, who is perhaps uh, uh, brought you further than anybody. And, uh, I, for instance, just the past uh, couple of weeks, I... Uh, Notice he has said that you don't have a punch. Well, uh, as I said earlier in the program, every man has his own opinion, and if a person don't have a punch, why is it that I have 16 fights and 13 didn't go the distance, plus the great Archie Moore? What would, what would you say? I, well, what, what do I have to do to have a punch? Well, I, truly, I don't know. I, well, if I don't have a punch, I never will have a punch. Yeah. I must have a punch to be able to predict the round in which my opponent will fall. Well, but, uh, for instance, uh, uh, what about Joe Martin? I mean, he knows more about you than anybody. Well, uh, do you have any respect for uh, his opinion and so forth? Well, uh, I, I cannot have respect for an opinion that says that's down in me, and I'm the most confident fight in the world today. I believe that I'm the greatest, and just because another person, whoever he is, uh, whether it be Joe Martin or whether it be my father, that says I can't do this, I don't have this, well, they can say what they want, but nothing will discourage me, and a lot of things are said just, to, uh, just for color. Uh, well, well, I mean, uh, uh, when, what did you say? You said they just said it for color? Well, yes, he also said not only a punch, he also said that there's an upcoming fighter of the name of Tommy Hill, soon be 16, weighs 150 pounds, and will stop me, will take my crown. And he also, I'm the, I'm the only fighter who writes poetry and the one who started it. Now people write me letters, writing poems about me, and this, this was a poem about Tommy Hill and me. This write-up, this, this, this was also in that write-up about I don't have a punch. Uh, uh, yes, so uh, all of this is, uh, it has a lot to uh, do to build it up. Uh, for instance, uh, I too, Cassius, uh, to uh, catch you away from the ring and seeing the other side of you, uh, would you recite one of your more serious poems to us? I mean, something that has nothing to do with fighting. I think that that would Well, I do not have any other poems. All of my poems don't fight. And I'm in the fight game. I'm out to be the heavyweight champ in the world, and I may have no interest in nothing else. And uh, as far as me being cocky and lippy and loquacious and bold and brash, uh, I'm going to do everything I can to liven up the fight game. And if I put myself on a limb like this, I have some responsibilities. What would I look like coming home uh, knocked out?
And then what am I going to say then? I'm not talking about your being knocked out. You brought that up. But well, uh, as uh, far as a right and torture. I, I think that uh, I think you'll go far. You've already gone far. And Thank I, you. I'm very happy for you. Thank you. But then uh, I... Well, you talk with a little doubt. Uh, I know. I'm not talking with doubt. I am quoting a man who knows you better than anybody. Well, how is it that he knows me better than anybody? Well, because he brought you up. He, he's responsible for where you are now. I'm responsible for myself. I'm training. I'm fighting. I'm one who train and fight and do. My father's responsible for me. My mother. They've done more for me than anybody in the world. Yes, but uh, and then Joe Martin. And Joe Martin has been, has been a lot of help to me. Joe, uh, Joe Martin is my, my, one of my best buddies. Joe Martin gave me a lot of confidence. Yeah. But uh, 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 as you know, I have, uh, it's my contract. I, I have the best contract in history. I have 10 wealthy uh, businessmen behind me. And as far as uh, who I'm with and who I didn't go with, it's, uh, it's all got a lot to do with my career and my future and the money involved. All right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. You're welcome. Good night. Please give your names when you call in. Hello. This is Jeff Wilcoxon. Yes, Jeff. I have a poem for Cassius Clay. That's here. Don't let it be too long. Okay. You sound like uh, me now. Cassius Clay. Others have heard of Sugar Ray. Soon they will hear no more. Cassius Clay's big mouth will be on the floor. Well then, buddy, when my mouth is on the floor, you will not hear no more of me because I will be going across the sea. <laughs> That's a rhyme there, too, with it. Hello. This is Donnie Potter. Yes, Donnie. Uh, uh, Cassius Clay says that he predicts rounds in which the person will fall. Well, does he try before then, before the round he predicts, to knock the man out. Well, uh, 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 I have had a few fights where I predicted five rounds and my opponent started to fall in uh, two, so I had to clinch him and hold him up until the fifth one to make my prediction right. Mr. Moore could have fell in three, but I had to make it go four. But do you always do that, uh, fighter? Well, I, I don't always do it. Sometimes I barely can make it work. But uh, uh, I have become so popular at this now until reporters, they don't say, are you going to win? They don't say, or, how do you feel? Or, are you confident? They want to know what round am I going to knock him out in. So I must be awful great if they want to know what round am I going to do it in. They don't ask me if I'm going to win or do I think I'm going to win. They all want to know the round. And if I say the round, then they build it up and publicize it. And they're awful serious about it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Hello. Uh, Mr. Metz? Yes, Mr. Lohmeyer, how are you? Pretty good. I, I just got back from a nice church supper, so I'm feeling pretty good. Very good. Well, there's a fella here I had who came back from a pretty good dinner, Just got through from one, too. We should Is talk. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, we should get along all right. Cassius? Yes. I'm, I'm awful glad to talk to you. I, I'm, I'm glad they... That I uh, heard the other day, they, they've raised you up to number four now, haven't they? Well, yes, I should have been number four a year ago. I think so, too. Right. And, uh, yeah, I, I was, uh, of course, I, I was kind of uh, kind of sorry for old Arch. I, I, I like him. Well, I, wa I was, too. He was one of my idols. If he'd been fighting any, anybody else but you, but you I, I'd, I'd have wished for but. You're, after all, you're our hometown boy, and you represented us at, at the Olympics and did a pretty good job of it, too. Thank you. And I'm surely glad. And uh, uh, you want to look out for that list, Liston boy now, Cassius, because he, he's, he's bad news, but then I, I believe you can do it. Well, they say Liston is great, but he must fall in eight. Yeah, he, he's all right. But he's a, he's a, he's a, he hits hard, doesn't he? You just be at ringside. Don't worry about Mr. Liston. I'll take care of him. Take care of him. Huh? Right. All right, Cassius. I'm glad to talk to you. You're welcome. Good night, Mr. Lomar. Good night. Good night. That's a real nice man. Yes, he is. Hello. Uh, Cassius? Yes? Uh, this is Charlie Aircock. Uh, what do you think about uh, the offer from uh, the fight Cleveland Williams for $10,000 a year? I mean, well, as I said, uh, that program, that, 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 that uh, answer came up a couple of times tonight. Uh, I would love to fight Cleveland Williams for that. And another thing, this will be the first fight that I will not predict around. This fight would go the distance because the longer it goes, well, the more I will receive. <laughs> but if they will, if they uh, would give me the full sum, if I could knock, if I could not, could knock out Mr. Cleveland Williams, that fight would be scheduled for three rounds. So if you're thinking of coming, get there early. 
Well, do you think he's a good boy? Well, he's a he, he's a pretty good boy to be ranked. He's ranked now. I'm ranked number four. He's ranked number five. He must be pretty good to be that close to me. But uh, uh, like I say, the fight will go three rounds if I can still get the full guarantee. Well, that's an awful bold prediction. Three rounds. Okay. Uh, good luck. Thank you, Chow. You know, good night. Hello. Uh, this is Barrett Bernstein. Yes, Mr. Bernstein. I would Bernstein. ask Cassius a question, please. Right here. Uh, do you ever lose your temper in the ring? Well, I never lose my temper. I never lose my temper because when you lose your temper, you for you 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 get wild. You have the tendency to get wild, and uh, when you get wild, you don't know what you're doing half time. But great fighters don't lose the temper. Fighters such as uh, 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 say when guys like Jack Dempsey, Gene Tunney, Joe Louis, Sugar Ray, or. Uh, a lot of other great fighters, they do not lose the temper. When a fella have the right amount of speed and natural ability and class and science, well, uh, you never can tell when he's hot. It looks like I, as, a, as far as looks are concerned, you may say that I always lose my temper because I'm always aggressive and I always call around. Cassius, do you ever lose your temper uh, in, uh, in uh, life outside of the ring yourself? No, I don't. I have no police records whatsoever, no, no kind of record. Well, I don't mean that. I mean, you know, like in a family squabble. Or uh, a friend. Uh, who well, yes, I may lose my temper with my brother over the food table. He may won't take all ice cream sometime, and we might have to uh, go to war over that sometimes. That's about the only time I lose my temper when you mess with my money and my food. All right, thank you, sir. Okay, thank Good you. question. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, this is Lillian Rankin. Does it ever bother you when somebody talks about your big mouth? Well, no, it uh, don't bother me. I notice uh, uh, a lot of people I know, one person can say, well, look at her. Uh, she's got a hole in her dress. Uh, uh, she she did this or she did that. And I know a lot of people in that position, and they let it worm to death just because of what one or two people say about you. But the whole, as a matter of fact, when I fought in Los Angeles, I, uh, I broke the record. We had about a good 18,000 people in there, and you couldn't hear the man announce my name when I fought Archie Moore for the booze. That makes me stronger, and, and when I come out of the ring after predicting my round, after this victory, those boos turn to cheers, and that's the... Does that you and your home folks uh, <laughs> talk about your big man? No, it don't. Uh, uh, it would bother me if I talked and didn't back it up. A lot of people call me conceited, but conceited means a person who think they have it when they don't. I know I have it. That's why I'm so bold and outright with what I say. I know I have the speed and ability. I know there's not a heavyweight fight in the world today that can hit me. If you look at me, you'll think I'm Chubby Check or something. I do not have a mark on my face. Do you think your brother will go as far in the fight ring as you? Well, my brother would go as far as uh, 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 I tell him to go. Uh, he, he listens to me. He trains with me. And whenever he can hit me over three times around, then he's ready to turn pro. But he takes advice from me because I've been in this business. I've fought the best. I've been in it long enough to know when he's ready. So he'll go when I say so. Well, when you add on training or fighting and so forth, do you date very much? Oh, it's a strange thing. I do not. I do not have any girlfriends. The closer I get to the championship, the less uh, interest I have in girls. But uh, 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 that, that, that would happen uh, when the time comes. But uh, my girlfriend right now is boxing. And my dates are coming to these radio interviews, TV interviews, and going to fights. Those are my biggest dates. Okay, well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, ma'am. I think that's uh, good to hear from a woman occasionally. I think those were good questions. Cassius, let's take a minute out here. You've been pretty hot and heavy on the phone. Yes, this is rougher than fighting. <laughs> and uh, we'll have a word from uh, J. Raymond Rice and then back to some more calls. This is Milton Metz, and our Juniper 52385 tonight for our 90 minutes is turned over to Cassius Clay. What's it like to be a world boxer? All right, up and at him, Cassius. Hello. Well, this is David Nix. Yes, sir. Cash, this is not to be meant offensive, but do you think your mouth is becoming your trademark? Well, it looks that way, don't it? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, uh, 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 my mouth uh, has a lot to do with it, but my mouth means nothing if I'm not in the physical condition to back it up, because I'm on such a I'm I'm on such a spot now. Uh, not everybody have a lot of fans locally and uh, nationally. And a lot of, uh, you may say, uh, people rooting against me, but that just makes it more better. When you have 10,000 people coming to root you and 10,000 coming to boo you, then that's, double, that's a double audience. But um, uh, 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 my mouth, you might say, has been a trademark. 
everything I say, I've been backing up so you can't say that it's just a gimmick because I actually get in there and do what I say I'm going to do. That's why I receive so much publicity and uh, a lot of things that I receive because I'm not only a talk, I'm a doer. Okay. Thank you very much. Can Thank you. you. Good night. Hello. Okay, I, I want to know if um, I'm doing well. I want to know if um, what if, if you lose your next bite, where would you go? Leave the country, and right now I don't know where I'll go. I might go to. What country would you go to? I might go to Italy. I might go to. I've always wanted to see Nigeria. I might go to Mexico. I would like to see Mexico. I'm going somewhere. It's because I talk too much to come back. Okay, thanks. You're oh. welcome. Hello. Uh, this is Larry Copper. Yes. Uh, Cassius, I want to ask you, uh, what do you think about uh, uh, Williams style in boxing? Well, it's a strange thing. I have never seen Cleveland Williams box, but I have never seen him box, but yet I am calling around number three. He must not be very good then. Well, uh, he, he that don't say. I mean, you can't say he's not good, but uh, 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 that's why I say I'm the greatest. I call all of my rounds. And when you come to Louisville, would you would you come to the D.C. South High School? All the boys are talking to it, talking about you out there. Well, I'll be glad to come. What's the name of that high school? At D. Sales. Well, when I get time, I'll be there. It might be sometimes next week when I'm not doing nothing. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Hello. Yes. 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 This is Charles Vincent. I'm one of your fans. And right. oh. I'd like to, if you know I'm for you 100%. Good. I'd like to see anyone with confidence. I've enjoyed seeing you develop on uh, Champions tomorrow. And Thank you. We'll continue pulling for you, but there's some things here that uh, I'm concerned about and uh, I'd like to discuss with you. Yes. Notice tonight you uh, said that you're tense because of your predictions and. Uh, that brings to mind the fact that maybe you're not getting all out of yourself that you could if you were a little more relaxed. Well, uh, there's a lot. You notice every time I fight, I'm getting better and better, bigger and heavier. I'm not slowing down a bit, but uh, I'm getting awful strong. I'm just 20 years old. I'm growing, and you have not seen the greatest uh, in Cassius Clay yet. I fight as hard as I have to fight. If I say the man is going to fall in four rounds, well then that's going to be a hard fight from the beginning. If I say he's going to fall in eight, then it would start off a little slower. I only fight as hard as I have to. Excuse me, sir. Uh, would you hold a minute? We have a call from Canada and we'll come back to you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Mets here with Cassius Clay. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hello. 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 It's El Fudu. Hey, a little louder and a little closer to the phone, sir. You're very weak. This is El Fudu. Hello. How you doing? This is Cassius Clay. This is Cassius Clay. This is Cassius Clay speaking. Right. This is El Fudu, Muskoka, Ontario. Yes. How you feeling? Uh, you know we gotta go out there and box you and put you down for keeps. Who's that? Uh, a chap named Reynolds. You know a boxer named Reynolds? He's no, I don't. What about Reynolds? Well, he's an undertaker. He's an undertaker? Yeah. Well, 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 well what about him? Why, he want to start boxing? He want me to train him or something? He's been boxing people for years. He's been boxing people for years. <laughs> that's a good one. I hope he never get me. <laughs> hey, put him in the keys from there. That's, that's a good expensive joke from Canada, sir. He will. We get it in Louisville. Anything else, sir? Well, that was a, you wouldn't want to spend a few dollars to play a little joke. This is WHS. This fellow was good enough to wait. Go ahead, sir. This is Charles Vincent again. Yes, yeah. We were in a discussion about you being tense uh, because of your predictions. And uh, one of the points that uh, I wanted to bring out was the fact that uh, now that you're getting nearer the top, you're going to be meeting better and better fellows, and you're going to need to pace yourself more than you have in the past. I just wondered if you made a prediction that a man would fall in four, if that would have any overall bearing on the fight when I would have no time for pacing I, my, my fight with this Cleveland Williams I predict three there was there's no time for pace pacing myself then, then you don't feel that uh, that you're gonna have to pace yourself well, I couldn't pace myself because my prediction wouldn't come out right. I would have to wear the fella down in the first round, shake him up in the second, and take him in the third. Well, that's, that's the point. And that takes a lot of hard work. This, this is awful strange. In many, that's the point I'm trying to say. Oh, yes, yes. You feel like. I understand. Trying to make. If you feel like that you've got to do this in four, and you run into a fella 
that uh, is a lot better than you anticipated, and believe me, sometimes you, you must do that. You're right. Uh, suddenly, after you find that you haven't knocked him out in four, uh, well, then I might come frustrated and uh, well, I'll just have to lose the fight. I'll just have to settle for five rounds or six rounds or maybe a decision, but I'll just miss my prediction that night. Well, uh, Cassie says one final remark. And I am for you 100%. I'm Good. for you all along. Good. Uh, movie stars have been known to do things, uh, well, everything from posing them nude until almost anything until they get the uh, reputation built up. Now that you have this rep, uh, why not back off and relax? And uh, That is a strange thing. You notice? Huh? I understand. I understand. Fight, and I think you'd be a better fighter. And uh, well, it, a lot of people, not myself, because I like you how you are. But a lot of people even like you better. And uh, I think you'd probably win the championship. And stay, you know. Well, if they like me better, they wouldn't be too interested in getting getting to the fight to see me get beat. See, uh, 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 I don't think I don't think anyone wants to see you beat. All us Louisville people are pulling. Oh, I know that, but a lot of them are out of the country. A lot of them are out of the state. I know I'm. I know I'm. I'm home here. I have all the uh, uh, support. So, uh, uh, people behind me I won't hear, but as far as uh, uh, I read a write-up in the National Magazine, instead of Cassius Clay getting quieter and, and, and getting more n nastier to the reporters and the news uh, uh, reporters, I'm getting nicer. I'm talking more than I ever talked, and I'm getting higher, and I'm awful bold. I'm bolder. You're getting higher and more power to you, and the higher you get, the better I like it, but I just wondered if... Well, no, I will never slow down, if that's what you want to know. I will get bolder easier. Each, each as high as I get. I'm going to talk and make all the personal appearances and, and, and do more than I've ever did because people want to see me more now. And people, reporters, that's one reason I'm on this program tonight. I'm a good talker. And if I quit talking, well, the newspaper men, the Life magazine, Sport Illustrated, and World's Biggest Magazine, they wouldn't follow me all over the world to get stories if I didn't give them nothing to talk about. And people want to hear me predict. They like it. And as long as they like it, I'll but do it. The point there, but the point is that I understand that you have attained this uh, reputation. I just wondered if oh, you'd be a backing off point somewhere. Oh, then you wouldn't read much about me no more. No, well, I'll, it'd be champion. You, you people read about you a whole lot. Well, but still, Sonny Liston's a champion. Floyd Patterson's a champion. You hear nothing about him, and they're the champion. All you know is he's the champion. They're, I receive more publicity than all of them. When I'm the champion, I will continue this until somebody shut my mouth. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night. This is WHAS in Louisville, Kentucky. 840 on your dial. Milton Metz here with Cassius Clay. Hello. Hello. Uh, Cassius, this is Laney King. How are you doing? Okay. Another lady. I'm calling to congratulate you on your appearance on the program tonight. I've Thank listened you. to it plenty of times, and I've called in once before on another particular question mm -hmm. and I would like for you to know that I think that this is the most exciting program I have heard I've heard Mil I've heard uh, uh, Wilson Wyatt and I also heard Governor Combs and yes. lots of other exciting people this is the most ex this is the most exciting thing that has happened to radio for quite a number of years it is this is the fans can get a chance to talk with the yes, people that's right. and this is not only the most exciting this but this is the most tiresome <laughs> <laughs> this, is, well, I, this is the longest I've ever been on anything. Yeah, well, it, it's grand, and I know that your fans are loving you for doing this. I work with the PTA at the school where my children go. Yes, ma'am. Of course, I'm around children a lot because I have an 11-year-old son. Yes, ma'am. And I hear all the children talk about you, and I think Ain't that sweet. you are one of the only boxes that I think I've ever heard of that have so many children following them. Yes, I know this. It's real nice. think that the courage that you have... The way that you have so much confidence that you'd be surprised how much that means to the children. That's right. And a lot of people take it the wrong way, but I, I think it's wonderful in you. Thank you. We need more people like you. Thank you, ma'am. I want to congratulate you and Milton Metz. You tell him I said so. He hears you. So, Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Oh. Of course, I'm sure you all know that uh, Cassius gets uh, no money whatsoever for appearing with us on this program tonight. He ate about $2,000 worth of dinner, but other than that, he... Uh, he uh, is up here just because he, he is uh, uh, Milton, friendly. I can tell you, fella, that I'll eat me. And You're that's kidding. the greatest writer in Kentucky. That's Larry Beck. <laughs> he eats more than me. <laughs> Larry, uh, Larry's a pretty good eater. Incidentally, speaking of Larry, he did a, a great piece on you 
uh, in the Sunday paper on November 25th. What did you think of that? Well, that's real lovely, and I wasn't surprised a bit of none of Larry's work. I have a scrapbook, and over half of it are Larry's clippings. And uh, I've been all over the United States. I've been from the... Uh, from California to Miami, Florida. I've been everywhere. I've talked with all of the reporters. I know all of them. And I will say that Louisville has the best in just about everything, boxing, baseball, or news, newspaper, and everything, and s newspaper writers. And, and this is not a plug, but this is Larry Beck, I believe, is tops. Very well said. He did a fine piece on you. Hello. Hello. And he's a good eater, that's true. Yes. Uh, Cassius, yes. I've seen the biggest part of your fights, and it seems to me like it, uh, you have more trouble against lighter fighters than you do the heavier men. Well, I, probably so. Lighter fighters are faster. I thought Alonzo Johnson gave you plenty of trouble. You well, that was my first, that was my first, uh, professional, um, main bout, and that was TV bout, and it was 95 degrees here that night, and Alonzo Johnson was a barber. Yeah. And when I fought Billy Daniels, it was 105 degrees, that was a TV fight, and he also was a barber. Yeah, but it looks like whenever I fight barbers on hot nights, I don't do too good. Yeah. It seems to me like uh, fighters like Machen and Cooper and Daniels and Patterson give you more trouble than the rest of them. Do you think so? Well, uh, Daniels did pretty good that night because I wasn't feeling too well and it was hot. I was weak, but uh, another fight with him that would be a, that would go about two rounds. Well, most but, of the fighters I named are pretty fast. They're lighter men. Well, they they are as fast as I want them to be. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. This is Milton Metz at WHAS in Louisville. Tomorrow night will be grab bag night your chance to speak out on any topic previously discussed in this series. Now, because of athletic activities next week, we won't be on the air on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but we will return on Thursday of next week, one week from tonight, uh, with our first program for next week. Tomorrow night, don't forget, is grab bag night. We still have 20 minutes to go tonight. Our question, what it's, what's it like to be a world-famous boxer? And tonight, meet Cassius Clay. Hello. Hello. My name is Clarence Morrow. Uh, now I'd like to ask, ask Cassius Clay who his next opponent will be. Well, uh, my next opponent, your voice sounds strange. Did you call once tonight? No. Mm. Uh, my next opponent may be Ingemar Johansson. Cleveland Williams manager is offering me $10,000 every round I go with him. He might be the next one. Uh, maybe Floyd Patterson might be the next one, but if it was left up to me, it would be Sonny Liston. Right now, I can't tell you who will be the next one. I really don't know, but you know me. I'm ready for anybody. Are you ever going to fight a fight in Louisville? Yes, I will. Uh, we, right here. Well, uh, this fellow by the name of Billy Daniels is not ranked too high, and it won't cost too much to bring him in. So he would be a suitable opponent for Louisville, and all of the people want to see it. I did suggest a new thing, a new gimmick. I would like to fight Cle this fellow named Cleveland Williams and Billy Daniels in the same night right here in Louisville. I welcome both. All uh, right. Thank you. Good luck. You're welcome. Hello. Uh, I'm Dallas. And uh, I'd like to know uh, who has the longest reach, Sonny Liston or Francis Clay? Sonny Liston's reach is one inch longer than mine. How are you going to fight him? Well, I'm twice as fast as Sonny Liston. I'll hit him and get out before he uses his reach. Well, um, thank you. I'm one of your fans. Okay, okay. You're welcome. Good night. Hello. Mr. Smith talking? Yes, Mr. Smith. I just want to talk to Cassius a moment, please. All yeah. right. Cassius? Yes, sir. Uh, I've been a fan of yours. I've been a foreign ever since you first went to boxing at 12 years old and on up. And uh, I want to ask you, what you what, what advice would you give to the young men today that's starting out boxing, these 12 year olds now? What? Well, I would tell them if they're boxers, to do plenty of road work. Um, listen to their local trainer or whoever he is. And, um... Uh, get plenty of rest, eat the right food, foods, not too many candies or sweets, uh, eat less starch and greasy foods as possible, and uh, a lot of people like to follow and do like their idols do. Well, uh, if, the, if the fellow's a local fighter, well, maybe a lot of them will like to follow me, which is good, but, yes. Young ones, you know. And that is right. Now, All of them, I notice. It seems that you're your idol, their idol, and I do everything very that I do. Him along just at 
time that Rudell Stitch was called away, I think it was very timely. That yeah, was that's right. I would I would advise them to do everything I do as far as training is concerned, but uh, be be real easy on their predicting and popping off I because they. Uh, oh, that's just your way of expressing your confidence. We all are sure of that. And, uh, I read about you about Larry Buck Beck's write up, and uh, I appreciate your. Cleaning. Thank you. And, and don't you think that Larry is one of the tops? He sure was. And I All right. Over again, and I think I want to congratulate you on being a good, clean fighter and a good, clean liver. It, it Thank you very much. Smoke, and you don't have to drink and cavalt around to be a man. That's right. And you don't have to be a sissy because you don't do those. Things. Right. So more power to you, boy, and I'll be listening. Thank you very much. Good night. Good, good night. night. Hello. Uh, this is Mike Parsons, and um, if you could say so, when would you fight uh, Sonny Liston? Well, Sonny Liston has a fight coming up with Floyd Patterson. Uh, it might not go off, and it might. We're waiting to see. Only time will tell. Uh, I would like to fight Sonny Liston tomorrow if I could, but uh, we may take take on Mr. Ingemar Johansson or Cleveland Williams. But uh, I really don't know who my next opponent will be, so it's hard to say. Okay. I'm a real fan of yourself. So thank, thank you. Cassius, I want to ask you a question myself uh, while yeah. I'm waiting for the next phone call. You know... Uh, there's no sadder sight than the over-the-hill boxer. That's right. Now, I know you're 20, and you have your whole future and a great one ahead of you. But there's going to come a day when you're going to hang up your boxing gloves. That is right. When does a boxer know, even the smartest boxer know, when he can, with dignity and honor, give up his, his, uh, his fisticuffs? That's and what do you plan to do? That's one thing uh, I admire about Rocky Marciano. He knew when to get out of the game. He saw uh, younger and better fighters coming up, uh, such as the top-ranked boys that you have today. He had enough sense to invest his money and to get out of the game in time. Well, a lot of fighters, they uh, uh, play around, uh, cat around, party around, you might call it, and live high, thinking that it's going to always be easy. And one day look up, and he's got a little age on him, and uh, uh, he's broke, you might say, and then he would try to come back to live off of his name. He has an established name, so he, he, he believes that he can get in enough shape to come back to draw enough money, to, to make enough money to live off of, and then that's when he run into a tough opponent, and then right there, overnight, it happens. But uh, 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 as far as I'm concerned, I believe that if I invest my money right, uh, uh, such as I said earlier, I would love to have a $500,000 apartment house, and if I should win a championship, that would not be impossible. And after getting something like that, and if I should have a bad day, well, I would have something to fall back on. You have thought about it, even though you are only uh, at the All right, I, I always think about it. There's always a younger man to come up better than you, just like I'm coming today. Like I retired Archie Moore, you might say, or oh, I, I, I made him look bad. Well, that, that can happen to me also. But right now, I'm not thinking about it. The main thing now is to invest wisely while it's easy. Very good, Cassius. Thank you. Now back to our calls. Hello. Hello, Cassius. Yeah, what's happening? Uh, this is Charles Asbell. Yeah. Uh, do you lift weights to help you box? Do I lift weights? No, you don't lift weights. Uh, 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 weightlifters are real tight and muscly, muscly, and fighters have to have uh, long, reflexible reaches. So uh, I do not lift weights. Yes, sir. Uh, are you gonna make any movies, you know, to show people how you train and stuff? Well, uh, when I'm financially able, I would love to go into movies. I love to act, and uh, I have been in a few movies, but I would love to do this. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Charles. If uh, you ever get around Mail High, could you come over and talk to us? I'd be glad to. I've always wanted to visit Mail, and I will when I get time. Okay, thank you a lot. You're welcome. Goodbye. Bye. Hello. Mr. Mann? Yes. Steve Wesley. I listen to your program practically every night, and Th I really like this one tonight. Thank you, Steve. How old are you? Uh, ask Cassius a few questions here. Uh, how old yes, are you, sir. Steve? Thirteen. All right. Uh, what, what do you think that's the toughest fight that you've ever been in? Well, the toughest fight I've ever been in at, at, at that age, uh, that, at that time I was fighting, was Alec Mittef. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the shortest fight? The shortest fight was a fellow by the name of uh, Jimmy Robinson in Miami, Florida. That was one round, and next to that, the shortest fight was two rounds. That was here, Lamar Clark. That's real good. Uh, 
Uh, how many years have you been in boxing? Ten years. I'm 20 years old. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Steve. Hello? Hello. This is Paul Hamlin. I'd like to ask Clash, does he think he's, um, I mean, uh, does he really think he can whoop uh, Sonny Lester? Yes, I really think I can whip Sonny Lester. Not only whip him, but call the round. The round is eight. You really think you can call the round? Well, uh, 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 who, 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 who can say that I don't think it? I've been saying it and doing it. So it just remains to be seen. Uh -huh. He said that I won't go for eight seconds. Do you think he believed that? He said I won't go as long as Floyd Patterson. Do you think he believed that? I don't know. I just believe he was talking right then, but uh. Well, he really believes it. He can't see or uh, or uh, uh, he called uh, he called me something that the reporters didn't get. He called me a uh, uh, big mouth Kentucky country boy. He can't see nothing from Kentucky, and at the age of 20 years old, whooping him. Well, he's got. A, I told him if he keep popping off, I'm cutting it to six. All right. Thank you. I'm, okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hello. Yes, Matt's here with Cassius Clay. Hello, Cassius. Yeah, well, well, yeah, this is Cassius. What's happening? Don Nichols from New Albany, Indiana. Yeah. And I would like to know how you got your part in Requiem of the Heavyweight. Well, uh, as you know, I'm an awful colorful figure, and uh, uh, I'm a good actor, and uh, I'm awful colorful. And uh, I don't know, when I fought Alec Mitteff, the New York people were looking for a spot in that. And uh, they said that uh, just about that week, Midteth and I were fighting, and they said the winner of that would fight. And I knocked Midteth out in the sixth round. But I, if I had known sooner that they were judging to, to see who would be in the movie, it would have went three rounds. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. You're welcome. A moment out here for one of our clients, and then back for the final ten minutes. Hello. Uh, hello, this is Stein Clark. Uh I want to ask you, do you think that the patterson Liston fight was rigged? No, I don't think that fight was rigged. That fight, no, I don't think that fight was rigged. I was sitting in the ringside, and it happened to be one of those things. I believe Patterson was fighting when he went in. He, he didn't uh, run enough. He, he, he ran to Liston, and that was wrong. And Liston caught him with a good, solid uppercut, and that wasn't rigged. That's enough to shake anybody if you get hit with Sonny Liston's punches. Uh, where do you think you'd be if you hadn't met Joe Martin? What I think I have hadn't met Joe Martin? Well, uh, my bicycle got stolen that night, and I was uh, directed to Joe Martin. But I have a lot of natural boxing ability, and as I say, a lot of people have helped me, and a lot of people have helped me that I, uh, to come, do a lot of things that I'm doing that I have not revealed. If I stop to re uh, talk about everybody that it really helped me, it would take me 10 hours. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, Cassius. Yes. Uh, hello. This, this is Cassius speaking. Yes. Uh, my name is Hal. I have a bar and pro was in professional ball for 21 years. I often wonder, uh, since, you're, since, since you're such a clean-cut boy, do you ever offer a prepare before you're going to the ring, or, or do you attend church? Do you ever? Uh, yeah, I attend church a lot. What? Whatever part of the country I go to, I attend church. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I do. Uh, uh, I, I do have. I do pray before every fight. Uh, I pray awful hard before every so you're fight. You're a clean-cut boy. And I just. I just. I I, it hasn't been brought up tonight. I'm just wondering if uh, mm -hmm. this will well, swell up people to know since they, you talk so much and all like that, <laughs> they, they, you tease it. Well, yes, there's always one greater than us, and the Supreme Being, he's greater than all of us. Yeah. So uh, I always say prayers, and I believe that's one reason that I'm so successful, yeah. because yeah. when you hear ten or 15,000 people are booing against you, and you end that just on pure faith. Well, thank you, Cassius, and I think mm -hmm. you're a clean-cut boy. Thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Sue Burns, do you want to like to ask Cassius a question, please? All right, Sue. Yes, Cassius. Uh, Cassius, you have great responsibility to young people because of your prominent p uh, position. How do you feel this influences you? Well, this uh, this is real nice to know it. Really, it makes me feel good to know that so many young children are calling life an example and that are keeping up with me. And it makes me uh, 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 do uh, extra good in the deeds that I do and to put on a, a good example for the young people. And whenever I can get a chance to talk with them or to meet them, I, I love to uh, tell them everything that's best for them to do. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're welcome.
Hello. <laughs> yes, sir. What's happening? Uh, this is Mr. Dish calling. Listen, I want to tell you that you haven't got a greater fan than myself. Thank you. I'm Glad to meet you. 100%. I think you've got a lot of guts, and I, I don't care if you talk from now to Doomsday. I'm all for you. Thank you. Will. But I want to ask you one question. Yeah. Maybe you can make a more avid fan out of it. Uh, I've heard you say that the minute you get beat, the minute that you lose, that you're taking off. Taking off? Yeah, that you're leaving. I've heard you say you're going across the sea. And R- kind of that thing. is right, because... Well, uh, well, well, I haven't lost a fight yet, and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, people ask me more questions. You would think that I'm a politician or something for the calls and things that I get. What would it be like when I fall? I would have to leave. Oh, now wait a minute. Whoa, hold the phone there, Cash. Now look, you talk about leaving after getting beat one time. Now, is, is that a great fighter? To me, He's talking about you. I believe that I'm just that great. I'm not supposed to get beat. Who is it to beat me? Name somebody to beat me. No, uh, there isn't anybody now that I can think of. Well, no. good. Uh, yeah, if somebody comes out of nowhere, to, if some unknown comes out of nowhere to beat me, that makes it worse, don't it? Oh, uh, no, sir. There's going to be a lot of good fellas coming up like yourself. Well, that's good, but I'll have to be an old man when it happens. That can't happen now. Beat you. If one of them beats you and you fall and you say you can quit boxing right then. Take a few hundred dollars of my money and leave the country. Oh. Uh, Boy, that's kind of giving up, isn't it? No, I'll be back after a couple of months, after things cool down. Uh, <laughs> all these people, all these writers and everything, now they're downing you about your talking. No, no they don't let them, they, they don't down me. The, uh, it's good, it's color. It lives in the game up. I ha- right. I have Sonny Liston, the heavyweight champion. He can't talk, and he's talking. That also fattens that pocketbook, and I'm all for you. Here, I'll put Louisville on the map, I want to tell you. Thank you very much, champ. People that uh, are giving you the devil, I want you to just remember something. There's same well, I got it. I got just as many for me as I have those giving me devil. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, be cool. Uh-huh. Good night. Hello. This is Bob Graham. Yes, Mr. Graham. Can I ask Cassius a question? Yes, sir. Uh, Cassius, uh, which one uh, do you think would give you the roughest fight? Inga Mario Hansen, Floyd Patterson, or Sonny Liston, and why? Um, I would say Sonny Liston because he's got better reach, he's heavier, pretty fast with his hands but not his feet, hit twice as hard as both of the fellows, and he takes a better punch than they do. The next one would be Ingemar Johansson because he's smart enough to run, but Pat- Patterson is not smart enough to run, and the next one, would, Liston would be the hardest, Johansson would be second, and Patterson would be third. Well, I wish you a lot of luck in your career then. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Cassius. Yes, sir. This is James Bell. I know you remember me. I'll- Hey, what's happening, James? Be good. I'd like to know who do you think was your toughest fight, and who will be your toughest fight before you get a chance at the championship? Well, my toughest fight before the championship, most likely, would be Eddie Machen. He's the number one contender. And uh, the toughest fight that I have had, uh, as I can recall, was Alec Metteff. Okay, thank you. Yeah, be cool. Cassius, we've uh, almost come to the uh, end of our broadcast, and I want to tell you that I know you uh, have many demands on your time. You have old friends here, and you have a lot of business. I know you're reconditioning a, a basement playroom, and you have a lot of things to do, and I appreciate your taking the time off to come down here, but I want you to... I know a couple of people ask you for promises. I won't ask you for a promise, Yeah. but I want to ask you uh, if when you uh, become champ, even though it's been a 90-minute ordeal, whether you'll come back on my program again. Now, why do you want to say something like that, man? You know I'll be back as much as I like to talk. <laughs> Yeah, the only thing that worries me is that you're going to be a bigger fella and you'll be able to eat more. Well, I, uh, it's well, a pleasure uh, to, to eat with you, I must say, though. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not a pleasure for your pocket if you're paying uh, for it. I was only kidding, but uh, <laughs> anybody who has as healthy an appetite as yours... Well, yes, a lot of people do ask me, would I be uh, as uh, easy to cooperate with and would I be as friendly as I am now? As for a matter of fact, the day before the Archie Moore fight, I was standing on the corner of Hollywood and Vine debating with the fans. <laughs> and where can you find the top-ranked professional fighter, heavyweight fighter, standing on the corner talking with the low, the little class, the medium class people. Well, I'm all, uh, the bigger I get, well, the more cooperative I be, because when you, well, the, 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 the higher ranked I get, well, the more people listen, and I love for them to listen. And that winds up a very busy 90 minutes as we've talked about what it's like to be a world-famous boxer. Fitting that description to the T has been our guest this evening, Louisville's Cassius Clay, undefeated and world fourth-ranked heavyweight. Our sincere thanks to Cassius for appearing here tonight. Tomorrow will be Grab Bag Night, your chance to speak out on any topic previously discussed in this series. Now this is Milton Metz at Juniper 52385 thanking you for calling in your comments and opinions and saying until 8.30 p.m. tomorrow, good night, everybody.